Hey everybody, it's Craig Rector here, and in this video I'm going to share the secret to getting the orange and teal look in DaVinci Resolve without using LUTs quickly and easily. So stay tuned for that. So let's get started. All right, here we are in DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to give you a quick little walkthrough, and then we'll get right into the color grading. All right, so if you've never used DaVinci Resolve, there's a free version you can download. Stick around to the end of the video, and I'll show you where you can download this software for free. All right, so this is broken into different tabs. So if you look at the bottom, we're on the Media tab, where you can import and organize your media. Then we have a cut page. There's certain things you can do a little easier in the cut page. Then we have an edit page, which is very similar to what you would see in Adobe Premiere. Then we have a fusion effects page. We have a color page where we'll do the color grading. Then there's an audio page and then a deliver page. So we're going to be working in the color page. Just look at the bottom there. There's the color page. I'm going to try to go through this as quickly as possible. All right, so we have different setups here. We have uh, color wheels here. They're primaries. Now, we also can have a different look. We could have bars, and then we also have log. And you can see this is named shadow, midtone, highlights. But if we go to the wheels, they're just sort of named differently, lift, gamma, gain. And this is a global control, the offset. Now, you also have HDR controls. And to see all of them, you can just hit these arrows. So we have a global, we have highlights, light, shadow. And these are all just different ranges where you can make finer fine-tune adjustments. So anyway, let's just jump in and we'll walk through some of these things. And there's really multiple ways to do things in DaVinci Resolve. I'll show you a couple different ways to get the orange and teal look and to do some color grading, exposure, all that stuff. All right, so we got three different clips. We have one here shot in Iceland on the Panasonic GH5. We have one here shot on the Sony a7S III. And then we have a clip from the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. So three different types of uh, cameras. You can uh, edit Arri Alexa footage, Canon footage, anything. So what I'm going to show you applies to all different camera makes. All right, let's start with this one here. Now, if you've never used DaVinci Resolve, uh, if you're on the color page and you don't see the clips, look at the top here where you see clips. And if you click that, it toggles it on and off. So if you don't need to see the clips, then your viewer becomes larger. So I'll just leave that on for us right now. Also, this is the node tree. If you don't see that, you can toggle that on and off. And then you have open effects. So we're just going to have this view for now. And then you can see here we have a curve section and we have various tools. We'll get into that shortly. Then we have our scopes on the right lower portion. Right now we're looking at the vector scope, but we can look at the RGB parade. We can look at the waveform. Alternatively, we can expand this and we have a view of four different scopes. So we could make this whatever we want. We can configure this so we can have a view of four scopes two scopes, one scope, and we can also make this whatever size we want. So we'll start off here with, say, four scopes right there. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a white balance adjustment. Now, I normally like to use the x right Color Checker Passport. I usually do a custom color profile, but if you didn't happen to do that, there's a couple different things you can do here. You can use the eyedropper tool here. If we go to our primaries, you can see the eyedropper on the left, the white balance tool. If you click on that and you look for a neutral white balance, either gray or white, you can do that and that'll tweak your white balance a little bit, although not totally perfect. Also, you can go by eye by looking at the scopes. And here it's a little off, but it's really not looking too bad. But if you wanted to tweak it a bit, you could see by using the white balance tool, it did make a bit of an adjustment. So what we can do is if you look here and you always see this sort of backwards arrow, if you click that on any section, either there or if any of these tools here, it'll reset it to what it was. So let's try to do it manually just by looking at the RGB parade and the waveform. So I can see that it looks like there's a little bit more blue if I look at the waveform. So if I were to go the other direction, you can see how that brings it down closer to the other colors. But just because it's balanced doesn't always mean it's, it's going to look better. So I'm just going to play with this a little bit. And I think it looks pretty good there at 90. I can just play with the tint a bit here. So I'm more or less doing this by eye. I'm just sort of seeing which way I want it to go, because I'm going to go for the orange and teal look. So I think that's pretty good there. So what I'll do now is I'm going to create another node, and we'll do some adjustments on that node. So Option S on the Mac to create a new node. Now in this one, we're going to bring in the uh, teal into the sky. So again, too, I can just change this little uh, vector scope, waveform monitor to whatever I want. 
So we're going to just go with the waveform monitor for now. So the next step, I'm going to show you how to do a qualifier. So if you look down here, a uh, third over, it's a qualifier. And then we have a little circular part here. So this is the picker. I'm going to click on this and I'm just going to pick the sky. Now, if you don't see anything, you come up to the left and you set magic wand to click there. Now you can see we've selected the sky and some part of the land here. So you can see it's got part of her hat is chosen. So we want to refine this a little bit. So we'll go over here first with the luminance channel and we'll try to bring that down a bit. And you can see that it took out some of the peaks of the white there. That's pretty good. But then we're hitting into the, the water a bit. Okay, so that's good there. Now let's just see if we can adjust some of these reds out of the scene and see what happens with that as we go along. So you can see that sort of... All right, so we don't want to affect the water. Eh, it's not too bad. We've sort of isolated the blues a little bit. So there's different ways you can do this. You could go to your offset tool. You could pull it towards teal. You could go to a range that you want the teals to be in. You could go to your lift or your gamma. Alternatively, we could use our HDR tools and we could just add a little teal to the shadows or to the lights. And the idea of this is just pulling it away from the opposite. So you can see here we have our yellow, orange, and red. On this side, we have our green, teal, and blue. So you would just grab this little dot and drag it. Now, that's one way you can do it, but I'll show you what I think is better in this situation. So if you click on the Curves tool right here, then you have different options. As we click the little dots, we have Hue versus Hue, and we have Hue versus Saturation. And what we can do is we can adjust the hue. And to make things easier, we have different uh, colors to choose from. So we have red, and if I click on them, you'll see the dots appear on the graph. So now we have green, cyan, and blue. So now I can just target the tealish cyan range on hue versus hue. I'm just going to take this and I'm going to drag it up. And we're going to bring a little more teal into the sky and the water. Now, I don't want to overdo it, but I want to do it so that it works. Now, if I go this way, you can see it's a little more greenish. This way, it's a little more bluey. And then we just sort of drag it around. And we'll just leave it right there. Now, I can toggle this on and off. And we can see the effect it has. Now, to make it look normal, again, we click the magic wand. And then I can toggle this on and off. And you can see it's just changed it to a little bit more of a teal look. So that's awesome. Now, if you thought it was a little too much, you could go here to the little square with a circle. And then if you go to the key output, this is a lot like an opacity layer in Photoshop. So think of the nodes as different layers. So instead of stacked on top of each other, they're side by side. So with this one highlighted in red, we can lower the gain and this lowers the opacity of this layer. So let's say we take it down to about 800 or 80%. And then again, I can click it on and off and I'll make it bigger. So there's the teal look there. And then if I click it off, you can see it's a little more blue. And again, we have a little bit of teal. Now, I think we can add a little color to the background. Although there's no real orange here, option S to create another node. We'll do this adjustment there. And what I can do too, is I can take that mask that I've already created, drag it over. If I click here, you can see we have a mask. But if I go to the node and I go to the circle here with the dark circle in the middle and the square, and I switch that, then what happens is then the adjustments we make are going to be to this area here. So the opposite of what it was before. So there we go. So you could see that we're just going to make these adjustments to the land. Now there's a couple different ways we can do this. Like I said, there's always, we could do it just the way we did it with the curves, or we could use the wheels here. So there's an offset tool and this is the primaries. What we could do is just take this and we can just drag this a little bit towards the oranges. And that warms it up. If you want it warmed up a little more, you can even do it a little more. So it's a little excessive. Now also too, if you just wanted to do it in a certain area, it's easier in a sense if you go to the HDR tools and then you could just target the shadows or the light range and not the whole image. So we'll just drag that a little bit that way. And you can see that had a different effect <laughs> that I didn't totally expect. So we'll turn that off and we'll just see how that looks. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. But again, to reset anything, you just click there. And so we have a global tool in the HDR, just like we do in the primaries. We could also drag that too. 
Now, if we turn that off, you can see that it sort of emphasized more of the orange tones in the image. And then this other node here emphasized the teal. So that's just one way to go about it, really. Now let's go to another image. Now, when you're looking at it like this, now I should mention there's project settings and there's also color management. So I'll just show you that really quickly. If you click the little gear icon on the bottom there, bottom right, you see color management. Now, by default, it usually starts a project like this, DaVinci YRGB. If you choose DaVinci YRGB Color Managed, and then you choose DaVinci Wide Gamut, that will give you a larger color space. So sort of something like, say, how you would use Adobe RGB in Photoshop, and then you export to sRGB for the web. It's sort of like that. It's a very large color space. So I like to set it at the widest color space and then work my way down for export. And each one has an explanation of what it does. So this is suitable for SDR and HDR deliverables and preserves maximum image fidelity and highlight detail up to 10,000 nits, which is more than enough. And then I'm going to export at Rec. 709 Gamma 2.2. That's what my monitors calibrated to. And most people who are viewing daylight monitors or phones, you know, so that's the output. But again, you have choices depending on how you're delivering, whether it be for broadcast or whatever. So anyway, that's a brief overview of the color management. Now, I wanted to show you something too, is by default, when you bring this in, it's going to look like this, whatever your project gamma was, it'll look very flat, whether it be Panasonic V-Log or whether it be Sony A7S III. So in order to get this to look more like a Rec. 709 image, all you have to do is right click, go to input color space, and I shot this S gamut three cine. So S gamut three cine, S log three. Click there, and then it looks like an apply to LUT. So now we're gonna try to get the orange and teal look with this image. So as far as the white balance, I'm just gonna leave it like that. I'm just gonna create another node. And on this first one, I just might make a little bit of a correction as far as the exposure. So one way to do that is the gain would be the highlights. So we're gonna push the highlights a little bit more here. And then we're going to just bring the lift down a bit, just a tiny bit. And we've got a pretty good range right there. So I'm going to leave that like that. So the next one, again, I'm going to do a qualifier and I'm going to click here and click on this little mark there. And we're going to click there in order to see that we've got the magic wand tool. So now I'm going to make some tweaks to get rid of some of the things that I don't want to affect in this image. So as I do this, you can see that we're, Sort of narrowing things out and just leaving the skin tones here. I think I'll go a little more to the left here and just make sure we got the face in there. It doesn't matter if there's some other things there. And the highlights, we want to retain the highlights on the face. Let's see if I take some of the, yeah, that's pretty good there. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to push a little bit more orange and then in the next node we're going to push in some teal. So let's just get rid of this right now so we can see a little better. Now again, we can use the color wheels or we can use the curves. I'm gonna use the curves again. And so the skin tones usually fall between sort of red and orange and yellow. So I'm gonna click there as a starting point. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put to the vector scope. Now the vector scope has what they have here is called a skin tone line. If you don't see that, you can click on the uh, settings there and make sure that you have show skin tone indicator, make sure that's checked. And then we can see there's the skin tones kind of right to the right of that. So if we're on hue versus hue, we can just sort of pull it down a bit and push the skin tones a little more towards yellow. So it's a little bit more between red and yellow versus being more towards red. Now also, if we wanted to saturate the skin tones a little more, again, we could just hit orange and yellow and then we can push up on that. And then we can bring a little more color into her face. And then as we turn this on and off, it's subtle, but we've got a little more orangish and a little bit more exposure. Now what we can do too is hit option S and then drag again this blue to here, click there. And then we wanna go over here and click the offset. And then again, the qualifier. And you can see that her face is sort of shaded out and we're only going to affect everything else. So we're going to put some teal in this. And again, there's different ways we can do this. 
if we wanted to go to the HDR tools and we just wanted to say put them in the shadow areas, then all we have to do is just drag the shadow and towards teal. We'll turn that off. And you can see we went a little too far with that adjustment. So all we have to do is push it back towards center, keeping it more this way. Alternatively, we can just reset that and we can work with curves again. So again, we're on hue versus hue is what we want to be on. We'll click green, cyan, and blue. And then we can just push a little bit of cyan into the sky there. Now you can see it's only affecting sort of that range which is probably preferable in this situation. But we can also, like I said, we could go to the darks and we could use the wheels as well. So using a combination of these tools will allow you the flexibility to add the teal and the orange wherever you want. And you can always adjust each node's opacity if you feel that it's too strong. So one last little clip here I just wanted to mention too. If you have a Blackmagic RAW clip, when you bring it in, DaVinci recognizes it, and you can make uh, raw adjustments here using the raw panel. You just choose clip, and then your color signs, Gen 4 and Gen 5. Then you can play with your white balance because it is a raw clip. We could change this to cloudy, which brings a little more orange into the rocks already automatically. We could also adjust our ISO if we wanted to. Let's say we wanted to brighten it up using the ISO, we could do that. Highlight recovery, we can check that. I'll leave it at 400 and I'll just pull up the exposure a tad bit here with that slider. Now again, we can adjust the color temperature because it's raw. We can warm it up or cool it down with these controls as well. And then of course you can use the same tools, the primary wheels, the HDR and the curves to tweak this any way you want. So for example, if we want it to add a little teal to the sky here, I'll just create a new node. We'll use the qualifier. We'll click on the sky. We'll click on the magic wand and you can see it's going to affect the jackets. There's some blue there. That's totally fine. And all we have to do is just go to curves. Like I said, this is just one way to do it. We're going to go to green, cyan, blue, and then we're just going to push this up. Add a little more cyan there to the sky. And then we'll just click there and then we'll toggle that on and off. You can see we got a little more cyan in the sky. And then if we want it to make that a little more orange, we can do that too. And if we drag that over, click here, click our little box, click the node key circle. We've reversed that. And we can just go to a regular standard uh, offset and we can just affect the entire image, make it a little more orange. And there you go. All right, so you can get DaVinci Resolve free. I'll put a link down below in the description box but you can download the free version. This works with 8-bit files. I believe if you want to use 10-bit camera files, you have to upgrade to DaVinci Resolve Studio 17, but it's a one-time purchase of $295. So I paid for Adobe Premiere Pro for, I don't know, seven years every month. And so this was a no-brainer for me. And right now there's a promotion on for DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor, and you get a license for DaVinci Resolve Studio 17 and it's the same price as if you just bought the license. So I use this as well. It's a great little tool to speed up your editing. So I'd definitely jump on that if you're thinking of upgrading to the studio version. Also, too, if you get one of the Blackmagic cameras, you get a license for DaVinci Resolve Studio as well. So that's another win-win. So anyway, this is where you get it. I'll put a link below in the description where you can download the free version. And if you choose to upgrade to the studio version, I'll put a link down below that you can click on and check that out too as well. Definitely get the speed editor if you're thinking about getting a license or if you are on the fence about the camera, check out my review for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. All right, thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, give me a thumbs up. Just hit that like button. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, just hit that subscribe button and then hit that bell notification and you'll get updates when my next video goes live. So go ahead, thumbs up right now, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. All right, I'll see you in the next video.